Linda Peterson has been a designer in the industry for the past 18 years and is the author of over 10 craft how-to books ranging from polymer clay to jewelry making. She has appeared on many crafting shows on television and on the web. Currently, she is the host of Friendly Plastic TV and is the product spokesperson. Today, Linda is sharing the coolest Friendly Plastic Fracture and Fusion technique. I'm delighted to welcome Linda Peterson. Hi, Linda. Hi, Tiffany, and hello, everybody. I'm so glad that you are able to join me. Um, today, I am debuting my brand new book. It's called Beating with No Time, and I'm going to be giving away a copy of that. And one thing that I'm going to do today is show you kind of a simplified version of the project that is on page 37. If you look right here, let's see, in the center here, this is a fr uh, friendly plastic fracture infusion focal piece, and we're going to be making a very um, simplified version of that today. Before we start, though, I do want to um, let all the beginners know this is a good. This is one of the things that I get the most emails about. Is especially for new people when they first start using friendly plastic, they say, "Oh my goodness, um, I wound up with goo," and so we're going to kind of alleviate some of those problems today. So one thing I want to do is I'm going to move my camera down so you can see my workspace. And I want to talk real quickly about um, first one thing I want to do is I'm going to move my camera down so you can see my workspace. And I want to talk real quickly about, um, first of all, what Friendly Plastic is. It comes in strips like this. This is their metallic strips in a variety of colors. They should always bend. They should always be nice and flexible. If they're not, they're what we call snappers, and um, you'll have to use those for another technique. They won't work with this particular technique. But this plastic melts with heat. And one thing, there's a couple different ways that you can melt. You'll see right here I have a griddle. This is a pancake griddle that you get at your home supply store. And I have this griddle set on about 200 degrees. Now you'll know if friendly plastic is too hot because it will bubble. And you can see I've got a couple little bubbles here, but it's not bubbling like pancakes. So if it bubbles, it's too hot, you need to reduce your heat. That's how you will get goo. That's how you'll get just a bunch of black sticky mess. Also, you can use a heat gun, a heat tool, and the heat tool is probably one of the best things um, or one of the better heat guns because it doesn't blow a lot of air. So when you're trying to heat up your plastic strips, they won't blow around. Now, what I've done today for fracture infusion, this is a technique that was named by Janet Ewe, and it's real simple. Basically, what we've done is I have cut the friendly plastic strips into little strips, so I fractured them. And then we're going to be fusing them back together using heat. And I've already started on this side. Let me show you how this is done on the griddle. Let's turn this around. You can do this with um, strips of plastic that you've cut. You can also do it with um, leftover plastic. I'm going to show you two different techniques here. And you're just going to lay strips together. And you'll allow them to melt together. I'm using a non-stick, we call these little gold pans. You get these at Bed Bath and & Beyond. And they are in the, uh, let's see, they're in the toaster oven section because they fit real nice and um, they just fit the, the pancake griddle real nice and easy. So you can see that I'm laying the strips one by one. Any color, any pattern that you would like. You can even mix and match. You can um, add wide strips, thin strips. Oh, one thing I do want to tell you is how I cut my strips. That's one thing I did forget to tell you. Let's come over here. I've got a cutting board right here, and I also have a, I have a quilting ruler that has a lip on the end of it that will sit right on the edge of my cutting mat. And I apply double stick tape to the bottom of my strip, and I set it down on my cutting mat and then I use, let's see, where's my knife? There we go. I use a utility knife 
to cut. And that's how I get nice straight lines. So there's your little tip for today. Okay. This here has been melting for quite a while. And you can tell when it's completely melted because you can actually put a little fingerprint in there. And um, if you see a little fingerprint, then it's good and melted. Sometimes they melt apart. You'll get little um, holes in there, and you can just kind of tap that down and close up those little areas. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off the heat. And I could, at this time, let's move this back over here. I could go in and use just a regular cookie cutter. I've coated this with some petroleum jelly so it doesn't stick. And I could simply cut out shapes and uh, use that as a pendant. But I want to marble this. So I'm using this little tool here. This is called a marbling comb. Let's see if I can get. You can see it's got little teeth here. You could also use a corsage pin or any kind of a needle. And the the one thing that you want to remember when you are marbling is to keep your comb, all of your bristles, flat against the work surface. That is really important because there's black on the back of this. The metallic um, foil is only on the top. And you want to keep it directly on the work surface and you just want to pull through. You can see how I've got this as an angle. You can zigzag it if you like and pull all the way out and then pull your strips away. Now I'm going to take all these little tags off the end of the bristle and I'm going to go back through the opposite way. I'm going to follow those lines that I created earlier. And again, pull it all the way out, zip it back and forth and remove. Now you'll see I've got some little holes through here that I've created as I made my marbling pattern. So I'm going to put this back on the heat and I'll let those melt just for a couple seconds. Let these melt down and I can also press them together. I can kind of hurry it up along. Now at this point, because I've, I've made um, my plastic nice and soft, I can go in and I can begin cutting. And what you want to do is you want to dip it in cold water each time that you've made a cut. When you're completely finished cutting all of your shapes, and this can be any shape, it can be a flower shape, square, whatever shape that you want, you're going to put it into cold water. This is actually what sets the plastic and what makes it become permanent. I already have one here. Now on this little pendant, what I thought would be fun, I have a pendant blank here from Nun Designs. And these are great little pendant blanks that you can actually add any image or anything that you want to, but they work great for friendly plastic. So instead of using a cutter, I use the outside of the pendant as my cutter. So you can see here that I've put this, this plastic is already cooled, but I've pressed it down into the plastic, I've cooled it, and when I remove it, I have the exact shape that I need. Now all I have to do is take and, with a pair of scissors, trim out this shape, and I can set that down into my pendant blank. Let's see here. Whoops. I can also add charms or beads, or I can add any additional embellishment. To get this to set completely in, then I can go ahead and I can put that back onto the griddle and I can melt this plastic down so that it has a nice rounded texture. What I would do is I would cover this with some Envirotex light and that would make it look like um, dichroic glass. So that concludes, that's the, all there is to fracture infusion. It's actually a pretty easy technique.